Let's look at how we can use a key down event from a form to move a picture box. We want Clifford to be able to first of all move over to the right by using the right arrow button. That's what we're going to eventually try to get to. Well you see Clifford there. He's a picture box, image inside of a picture box. We're going to go back to form one and get the events with that lightning bolt because we want the key down event. So we don't want to double click on form one to get form load. We need to go to that lightning bolt, see all the events and double click on key down. Well, let's just see what happens when any key is pressed down. We'll just bring up a message box to show users that they pressed a key. We'll test this out and then any key when you press it down will trigger this event and the message box will come up. Doesn't matter if it's a space bar, a letter key, a numeric key, any key that gets pressed down triggers that event and the message box pops up. Okay, well let's hunt down a specific key. Let's check out first if they press down on A. So we'll use an if statement. That argument E is what's holding the information. The object that sends it is the form but the key event args that E thing is going to have the key. We could go with key code or key data. I'm going to go with key code. Key data will hold uh, for sure if they also pressed shift control and alt. Uh, we're just going to go with one singular key. So if E code dot equals and then inside there keys dot and there's a whole bunch of keys available there and I'm just going to take A. You'll notice there's all kinds of choices there. You can make another selection if you would like to test it out. And we'll have a message come up to let the users know that they press down on A. Let's check it out. And again, you can't see me pressing the keys, but I'll try to press some keys and nothing happens. But when I press the A key down, then that message box comes up. All right. Well, we're actually be trying to deal with the right arrow button. And if you think about it, we're probably going to be looking at trying to do all four arrow buttons. So instead of using an if, which you could do, I'm going to change this to a switch statement. So it would be ready for four different things. So I'll switch on E dot key code. And the first case will be keys dot right. And as you can see, that's the right arrow key. So I'll set this up. I'll get the break statement at the bottom of that case. Again, we'll have a message box show up. We'll let the users know that the, the key that has been pressed down is the right arrow button. So whatever you want to put in there. And we'll test this out. And again, you can't see me doing it, but it's only coming up, that message is only coming up when I press down on the right arrow button. So we're in a great place so far. We can now recognize when that right arrow button has been keyed down. What we really want to have happen is to move the picture box. So we're going to deal, well, it seems like we want it to go to the right. We could deal with, maybe it has a right property, pick Clifford.right. And we want to move it, let's say we want to move it 20 pixels. So we'll go plus equals 20. Whatever its right value was, we'll add 20 to it. But Visual C Sharp isn't liking this dot right. If you look, it said it was a read only property. We click on this button, we notice the, and go to the properties. So get off the lightning bolt and back to the properties. It's anchored top and left. So we can deal with its left property, not its right property. Well, that'll work out okay too. If we change the value of it, the left-hand side of Clifford to go up by 20, which sent it to the right by 20 pixels, that'll be okay. So now every time I key down with the right arrow button, Clifford is moving 20 pixels. The left side of Clifford's moving 20 pixels, which forces the whole image to move over 20. And Clifford's going right off to the end of the form. That's not good. Hmm. Well, we don't want to use electric fence for Clifford. There must be a better way. Well, there is. We need to make sure that we're within the boundaries of the width of our form, which is this. So 
if, well, let's check first. If we're going to add 20 to the left of Clifford, let's get what that value is and make sure it's less than the end of the form, which is this dot width. But that's actually the right-hand side. So I'm going to do minus pick Clifford dot width. That actually gives me left compared to left. I'll put that whole thing in parentheses so that makes sense. So the width of this form, we'll see later, it's about, I think it's 807 pixels. And we'll subtract the width of Clifford, and that gives us the maximum value that that could be before it would send the picture of Clifford off the form. Well, let's see if it works. We'll press that right arrow button or key it down multiple times here and see if it stops as Clifford gets close to the edge and Clifford will not go off the edge. Great. Well, what if we wanted to take care of going to the left? We'll do case keys dot left. And there will be some similarities to what we were doing to the right, but we're going the other direction now. So I'll copy this and paste it, but make some adjustments. For one thing, if we're going to the left, we're subtracting 20 every time. So it'd be minus equals 20. And when we check to make sure we're not going to go off the edge, we will first take a look at, well, what do you get when you subtract 20? And compare it to, well, zero. The left-hand side is at location zero. And we want it to be greater than zero. Okay. And that should keep Clifford from falling off the left side. So we'll take him over to the right. And it stops. Now we'll go back over to the left and make sure Clifford doesn't go off the edge. And we can go left and right and left and right as we want. So again, the left side is at zero and the right side goes all the way to about 870. I, I misspoke before, it's 870. And that's how many pixels it is. And it's like a coordinate axis. The top is at zero, and then the bottom is at 607 is what it looks like. There are no negative values, so it's not like you're in the fourth quadrant going down. It's Everything has a positive value. Maybe we'd like Clifford to move on his own once we press an arrow or key down on an arrow. So I'll introduce a timer into this project. I'll call it TMR Clifford in case there are other timers going at different speeds later on. It's going to go every one-tenth of a second with the interval of 100, and I'll enable it to true at the very start of the program. You might want to start it with a menu item or a button or something else might trigger the, the timer to start. I'm just going to have it start right when the program starts, so it's always running. And it should now be the timer's job to move Clifford, but it needs to know what direction we're going. So I'm going to make a string variable that is at a class level, and I'll call it current direction. Its default value will be none. And then four choices besides that could be right, left, up, and down. You could also use integer variables for that. And if you understand enumeration, you could do that as well. I'll copy this switch, even though I'm going to have to make some changes to it. And I'll paste it down here in the timer event. But the switch is really on that variable current direction. And the first case should be the string right. I'll go with the uppercase R. Just, you just need to be consistent with what you're doing. And I'll change this to the case, the string left. Again, this switch is based on the string variable current direction. Well, now the key down event, all it really needs to do is change current direction. So the timer will take care of the rest, but we'll just have to make sure that we're going in the correct direction based on what arrow was pressed down or keyed down. And again, the timer is set up, so it's every one-tenth of a second. So I press the right arrow key, and Clifford moves on its own, stops at the edge. I'll press the left arrow key, and Clifford goes, oh, I decided to press the right arrow key. Now I press the left arrow key again. And Clifford just keeps on moving, but we do have it stopped at a border to make sure that Clifford doesn't fall off the edge.
So that's moving left and right. Now you might want to try also dealing with up and down with some of these strategies. There is a pick Clifford dot top. So you could go plus equals 20 or whatever you want. And you can adjust with the dot top property. But if you try to deal with dot bottom and notice at first there's no red squiggles, but wait for it, there it is. So that's not going to work out. Everything has to be based off the top. And you may have to consider the height of the picture box. The form also has a height. I did this dot height equals 600, which would actually change the height of the form. But showing you just as we had this dot width, there's also a this dot height you can deal with as you try to make Clifford go up and down.